Hey guys, it's James here, the Sega-holic, one half of the Sega guys, and today I want to give you guys a look at something I stumbled across on the Dreamcast talk forums the other day. Now, there's been many fan mods of Dead or Alive 2 on the Dreamcast, adding things like new costumes, but this mod caught my eye because what this does, in effect, is turn the Japanese version of Dead or Alive 2 into something that resembles Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate that was released on the original Xbox. This patch is the work of Esperal along with Vincent NL who created the Blender tools and CBNJ who provided the tools to replace the textures in the game and as you can see from the footage that you're watching right now, the characters closely resemble their DOA2 Ultimate counterparts. Look at Kasumi here, her costume is a darker tone of blue and her costume features the white bird decals on the front and back. Every character has been retextured and looks more detailed than their stock DOA2 version, with the character's faces also being upgraded. Now, I have to stress that this build is not final, and Esperal himself has stated on Dreamcast Talk that this is very much a work in progress. As such, he admits that some textures look a bit weird, and some of the faces can look a little off, but we're still only on version 0.5.1 here. Running the game on my GDMU, the time attack mode, which is the closest the game has to a best of three rounds arcade mode, works perfectly. On the story mode, however, the game locked up on the cutscene where Kasumi meets Hayabusa, and even pressing the start button to skip it didn't work. As I said though, this is very much a work in progress. In terms of other changes, many of the stages have been retextured either fully or partially, including Death Valley, Danger Zone, the Great Opera, Demon's Church, the Cocoan, and many more. The full change log is in the description. Esperal has also patched the game to run in anamorphic widescreen, with partial aspects of the game's menu and HUD also running in widescreen. This patch is one that we'll be keeping our eyes on with great interest here at the Sega guys, and as always with these homebrew projects and mods, when there's an update worth letting you know about, we'll be right there. Anyway, that's all from me guys, if you've made it to the end, thanks as always for watching, enjoy the rest of the gameplay footage, and until next time, we will see you on the Sega side.